Do you feel like you're living up to your potential? Well, it may not just be a matter of what you've made up your mind to do. In fact, there's physiology inside your brain that helps you activate this higher brain living. And my guest today, Dr. Michael Cotton, is here to tell us all about it. Dr. Cotton, thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. This is an awesome opportunity. So what is higher brain living? Well, higher brain living is a system that helps bring energy from the lower primitive survival part of the brain into the higher part of the brain, which is the most modern, advanced, evolved part of the human brain. It's one of the really great new discoveries in science that we have this prefrontal cortex, this highly evolved part of our brain, and yet we're only using a very small potential of it. And the reason that we have found out is that it's because the lower primitive brain, which evolved at a time long, long ago, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years ago, that lower primitive brain is designed to keep you safe in a predator-rich environment. Well, guess what? That lower primitive brain is still in us today. And all it cares about is keeping you safe. And so what that lower brain wants to do is repeat the same patterns in your life over and over and over again. Because if you wake up the next morning and you didn't get eaten by a tiger, that unconscious lower brain feels successful. So it will replay those patterns, even if- I even didn't if get eaten today. You didn't get eaten today. <laughs> and, and even if what that means is that you have a terrible relationship or your finances are a wreck or your physical body is out of shape or uh, you, you have no energy level or your thoughts are not like you would like them to be, your, your brain, lower brain mechanisms will literally repeat that day after day after day after day because if you wake up that next morning then it feels safe and it'll do it again and again and again so people can't really change i don't believe can really change permanently and i mean big life transformations i mean creating the life of your dreams that can't happen until you get energy into the higher part of the brain See, this higher part of the brain, this prefrontal cortex, is a recent emergent, what we call emergent in, in evolution, meaning that it's there anatomically, but we're not yet utilizing it. And so what the higher brain living system does is help us get energy, shift our center of gravity from that lower brain into the higher brain. And when energy builds in that higher brain, we feel empowered, we feel on purpose, we create meaning in our life, we have joy in our life. And so we help get energy into that higher part of the brain and then help you develop a strategy to bring that higher brain energy to all of those things in your life that you wanna change and literally create the life of your dreams. It sounds fascinating. Now, just for clarity, Michael, how is this different from, let's say we have a mood, you know, we wake up and we have mm -hmm. a mood or we have an emotion, we have something on our mind. How is what you're talking about different or the same as that? Well, moods are connected with brain correlates. That's one of the recent scientific discoveries that all mental states or all states of consciousness have correlates in our brain. Something is going on in the physical mm -hmm. brain that connects w w these two things. And so what this does is it increases positive mood. It, it is able to elevate our mood and elevate all of our emotional states, elevate our states of consciousness, which is what literally the higher brain is all about. Remember, the lower brain just wants to cycle you into the same life. It wants to protect you. It's all about survival. Well, the higher brain is where you can thrive. It's where you can break free of those survival uh, patterns. And one of the things that's obvious to a lot of people is the strategies that we have today just aren't working very well in the modern world, right? right. That's where we get this anxiety and this stress. We're basically playing the same patterns out and we don't know what to do. The modern world has become too complex. Our life has to become too complex but we're trying to deal with it from this primitive part of our brain, which can't handle the complexity. You know, it's yeah. interesting. I mean, you raised such an important point is that we hear today so many people, you know, they're on antidepressants, anxiety medications. They're stuck in situations or lifestyles that they yep. aren't enjoying living. And people don't seem to have a tool or a pathway right. to break 
any of those cycles. That's and right. they, you hear that phrase all the time, I'm stuck. Yep, that's exactly it. And, and, and what we're saying is there's a physiology to that being stuck. Right. And that it's a battle between the lower brain and the newly emerged higher brain. Hmm. So the higher brain is like, if you think of all of a sudden, you might have wings, <laughs> okay? But that doesn't mean you know how to flap them. That doesn't mean you've learned how to take flight. And so the higher brain living system helps us energize that dormant, untapped potential in our brain that's laying there waiting. Once it gets energy, once it increases in metabolism, it presents a whole new potential for how we can live. Complexity is, is then dealt with not by returning back to simpler times, but by creating that view from 50,000 feet where you can see the whole thing and it slows down, the world slows down for you. I, I use the analogy, like you, you hear about uh, supreme athletes, like a, like a major league hitter or something, all of them, whether it's a tennis player or, a, or a, a, a baseball player, they all say the same thing. The game slows down for me when they get in that zone. Mm -hmm. And so when you're able to get energy into that higher brain, all of that complexity that the lower brain is trying to deal with becomes clear. And you see the steps that you need to take, and we help build strategy to take that. So we don't go back somewhere, or we don't suggest going back to primitive early times. We want to go forward and be able to deal with the modern world, the postmodern world, all of what's out there from a higher brain perspective so that we can live a life of meaning and purpose and give our gifts to the world. And, and what the research tells us today is that's just not happening. Most people are just surviving. They're just trying to get through the day without really knowing why they're even alive on the planet. And, and we're, we're kind of the antidote to that. And so not only do people, you know, they create those positive me mental emotional states and, you know, move out of that depression and that anxiety and that stress, but it's so much bigger than that to me. It's it's not, it, it's about growth and evolution and it's about being the best that you can be, being alive on the planet and feeling like that means something, that you get up in the morning and you're juiced to take on the day and that, and, and, and that you're just alive with that potential. You raise such an important point mm -hmm. and I'm sure many people watching are thinking, I just want to get through the day. Right. You know, I just, I'm exhausted, I'm frustrated, I'm not happy inside my business or my relationship, I just need to get through the day. Yep. Tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you come up with a higher brain living system? Well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the quick story. Okay. okay. I had a very profound what, what I would call awakening experience myself, where I basically went to a a, a, a college dropout. I didn't even drop out. I was thrown out. I had a .57 GPA. Uh, I didn't go to my classes. I had really been someone just floundering in my life, and almost overnight, I had a, just a, a epiphany and it was just like something turned on inside of me. I changed the whole direction of my life. I, I went, I started taking 32 credit hours a semester, twice the normal load to get my uh, GPA up enough that I could get into a professional college. I graduated with, with a doctorate with on the national dean's list. And I, I say all this just because it was part of what created this fascination in me is the, the what, what is the potential in someone and what turns that on in it? It basically became an obsession with me in my life, looking at what creates elevated consciousness, what allows people to attain things. How do we flip the, that switch, How right? do we flip that switch? I mean, switch could you flip and, the switch right, for that's yourself? Right. That's right. But and you want to be able to do that for others. That's right. And, yeah. and what I did was I just devoured every bit of research I could have in, in, in you know, everything from developmental psychology to consciousness studies to philosophy to Eastern healing arts, everything I could find that had anything to do with human potential or the uh, uh, elevation of consciousness. And, and what I found was is that that story, my story wasn't unique, but it was it seemed to happen randomly. There seemed to not really be a good system developed for really looking at what was going on. And so I, I just took that on and it just, it literally uh, occupied every moment of my wakefulness. So for most people out there, you could only just hope that something would come right. along and, and flip your right. switch. And you want to take the hope out of it. That's right, that's yeah. right. And so I, I said, <laughs> very good. I, I spent almost three decades then diving into 
that looking at the people who had had these profound changes, looking at everything from different Kriya yoga techniques to modern psychotherapeutic techniques to life coaching. Sounds to like it was consciousness fun. Study. It was fun. <laughs> it, 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 I, I didn't know. I was just, right. I, was, it, I just devoured it. And, and what I discovered along that, that path was that there, what I found was the missing link in helping people consistently transform. And by that, I mean being able to wake up the, the uh, researcher at the, at the uh, University of Pennsylvania, the famous neuroscientist Andrew Newberg, said that uh, when that prefrontal cortex turns on, that people wake up to a new reality that's even more real than the old way that they were alive. And so I looked at what, what I found was the missing link to that waking up was the physiology, that there was brain correlates that, you know, you could meditate for 30 years and maybe something would happen. But what if we could change the part of the brain that we now knew from a scientific perspective was associated with these higher states of being and this higher human potential? And so I devised a system uh, that would cue pathways in the body. Literally, there's pathways in the body. Some of these have been known for a long, long, long period of time. Uh, from different acupuncture meridians or nardi points in yoga. That, but we looked at this from a kind of a modern Western scientific perspective. And w one of the things that's been discovered is that these pathways are what's called piezoelectric. These pathways are crystalline in nature, meaning when they're cued or contact or stretched in just the right way, even very gently like this in these pathways in, right. in the body, in the back of the body, if it, through the protocol we developed, that release of energy from cueing these pathways in, in the right sequence moves up to the higher prefrontal cortex of the brain. I think that the best way to really demonstrate this is to watch you yeah. do this process yes. with someone. So let's just take a quick break yep. and go to that demonstration awesome. and then come back. Perfect. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Cotton and I'm going to do a demonstration of a higher brain living session. A higher brain living session in a center is actually 45 minutes long, but we're going to compress this into about 10 minutes, but you're really going to get the point. The demonstration is quite dramatic, so I want to quickly build a little context around this. The higher part of the human brain, the prefrontal cortex, has been shown by science, by research, to be untapped potential. It's the part of the brain where we can see the goals we want to accomplish in our life, where we can take the action steps necessary to make that happen. It's where we have deep spiritual connection. It's where we have states of joy, where we can elevate our consciousness and basically accomplish our life's dreams. So what we've discovered is that through these pathways in the body, if we cue these in the right place at the right time in just the right way, a release of energy happens that moves up into that untapped part of the higher brain. And when this happens, because that potential is in there in all of us, there's a mechanism in our bodies, an untapped mechanism, that will actually engage and start this breath response we call a salutogenic breath, moving breath up to the higher brain, oxygenating the higher brain, increasing it in its metabolism. There's also a larger wave that will engage that you're going to see in Jules body where there's a dissipation of tension or stress out of the body. It's basically releasing the old lower primitive brain junk so that more energy can build in the higher brain. And then through this process, we help clients bring that higher brain energy to all areas of their life where they can make truly radical and transformative change in progress. So we're gonna do the demonstration about 10 minutes long and then I'm gonna let Jules say a few words about her experience. By the way, this is Jules. <laughs> Jules is a higher brain living client. Uh, she's also a higher brain living facilitator. She's been receiving care for a few months and this is a very common response for someone who has been involved in the program uh, for this level of time. So Jules, would you please lay face down? So remember these pathways in the body have the potential to release energy if they're cued in just the right way and just the right place at just the right time. And it looks wild, the response in the body. But the thing to remember is that we only use a very small portion of that prefrontal cortex, of that highest, most evolved part of our brain. And what you're going to see is what happens when more energy builds in that part of the brain. And this is the potential, we believe, for every single person on the planet. So I'm going to literally cue these pathways.
in a very specific sequence and you're going to watch and notice a change in her breathing pattern. You see how this breath is building? That's a salutogenic breath. That's an automatic response. Her brain is engaging to increase its own metabolism, to get energy into the part of the brain where she feels empowered and where she can make change in any area of her life. And now you see the larger wave engaging in her body. We call this a salutogenic wave. It's a wave, once oxygen is built in that higher brain, once metabolism is increased, she's now in that empowered state. This wave is now, it's like hitting the reset button on a computer. It's dumping or dissipating any stress or any tension that the lower brain may be holding on to. That lower brain that tries to create sameness in our life. That junk is getting released, so the pathways open and more energy builds in the higher brain. And she's having a feeling of well-being, that almost that sense of invincibility that's associated with energy in the higher prefrontal cortex of the brain. And as she advances through this, this system, she actually has a guidebook that creates the map and strategy for her to take that higher brain energy and to apply it to every area of her life and create a truly transformed life. And I know that what you see on the table looks wild but this has a very strong scientific foundation and it happens very consistently. One of my favorite quotes by the author and futurist, author C. Clarke, was, any sufficiently advanced new technology will appear indistinguishable from magic. So this is so far advanced that when we see it, it looks like magic, but it's not, it's science. It's physiology, it's energy building in the higher part of her brain so that it cues its own mechanism to start to further build that energy into that untapped evolutionary part of the human brain. Remember, the lower brain tries to create sameness in our life. The higher brain is where we can create change, where we can grow, where we can evolve, where we can thrive. And humanity has been locked into these lower brain strategies. And this is a vehicle to shift that center of gravity into that highest part of our brain so we can literally create the life of our dreams and hopefully all create a new planet. So the breath is continuing to build. Remember, she's not doing any of this on her own. She's the witness to it. She feels it. She knows it's happening, but she's not making it happen. She's just letting it happen. The breath is an automated response. The wave-like movement is an automated response. It's coming from her higher brain. She could stop it, but the feeling when you feel it is, oh my gosh, this is the most wonderful thing I could ever imagine, and there's no desire to ever want to stop it. And the contacts are very gentle. But these pathways are what we call piezoelectric, which means that when they're compressed or stretched or contacted in just the right way, they release energy. We know that through science now. And we've patterned this out in a way, created protocols that that energy moves up to the higher untapped part of the human brain and basically frees us from the habitual lower brain strategies that don't let us move forward in our life. And so although this was a very condensed version, I think you really get the point. And I'm gonna have Jules set up nice and slow. Jules, I want you to set up, face the audience, 
and I'm going to have her say a few words about her experience. Jules, would you say a few words first about your experience on the table, like what you were feeling as that response was happening in your body? And then after that, would you just uh, talk a little bit about what higher brain living has done for you, what going through this program has done for your life, what changes have, ha have occurred? Would you mind sharing that? Feel is just this breath that it's not the normal breath that just comes here. It like goes all the way down into my hips. I'm just taking this huge, huge breath. And I just feel my body just beginning to expand. I feel light. Awesome. I um, don't feel like, I just feel loose, no tension. Um, like right now, I just feel really, really good, full yeah. of joy. and. I could sit here and have a laughing session with you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that joy, that empowered state through this program, you can bring that to your life, bring it to your challenges, and that's where real transformation comes from. So how has Higher Brain Living changed my life? Um, I'd almost have to look at how Higher Brain Living hasn't changed my life. <laughs> yeah. Everything everything from the moment I wake up and I am conscious, different thought patterns are going through my head. Um, my day unravels different. My relationship, I feel like I'm a good mother. Mm. I'm a good, like I, I love being a mother. Um, I love being a wife. Um, my relationships have changed. I probably one of the biggest things that has helped encourage all of that is my sense of confidence. Mm, which is built through this program, through this process. I, we talk about head, heart, and spine. Mm -hmm. I've always had a big heart, but losing myself in that, mm -hmm. and now I feel like I have like this spine and everything's connected. I have greater clarity, mm -hmm. and I just feel stronger, ah, more confident. That's beautiful. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And I'm happy. And I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so for more information, HigherBrainLiving.com. Michael, I noticed you were doing a couple of different things inside that demonstration. I mean, it looked like there was some breathing going on. You were touching different yep. points. How does that all work together? Isn't 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 it amazing in the in the first place? It's it's like wow. How does that happen? What right? is he doing? <laughs> right. And, and so I one of the the first things I want to state is that is to understand that we are only using a potential. There's some research now that shows that about five percent of the potential of the highest, most evolved part of the brain is all that's being used. So what happens? 5%. 5% of its potential. That's it. Yep. That 5% of the potential of that evolved part of the brain is all that we're currently accessing. Wow. So there's this anatomy, this architecture that's laying there, largely dormant. And so what, what we found is that through these pathways, when we cue these, and we do this in a 22-step program where a client actually comes in, you saw the demonstration was a compression of this. The, the sessions are actually 45 minutes long. And with each of those sessions, we actually have a Higher Brain Living Guidebook. Can okay. I show this real yes, quick? Yes, please. And, and I'll just be quick, but there's, there's, within this guidebook, each of these steps, each time a client has a session, there's very specific steps that they take to create strategy for their life. So we're not just engaging the higher brain, but we're helping you bring that higher brain to all areas of your life. So over this 22-step program, you come into a higher brain living facilitator, you lay on the table for 45 minutes, and you get the upload. The energy goes to the higher brain, and with each of these 22 steps, we're shifting that center of gravity from the lower brain to the higher brain. Well, as you advance in the program, you start to learn to turn that response on yourself. And then you start to use this guidebook to take inventory of what you want to change in your life. And then you develop strategy, a, a literally a way that anchors the higher brain response, which remember, that's the part of the brain that can see the future, that's the part of the brain that can take the steps necessary, it's the part of the brain where we create our compelling future. We're now anchoring that part of the brain, that response, with your goals. 
and your vision and your passion. Because what happens is when people have areas of their life that aren't changing, let's say, and everybody can relate to that. We, we, we change our relationship, but somehow it's the same relationship. It's just a different face on the person, right? Or we end up with the same financial situation year after year after year after year, the same condition of our physical body. We try to lose 100 pounds or what, what, whatever that is. And what I, am, what I am suggesting is that the reason these areas are resistant to change is because they're tied into that lower brain physiology, that primal part of the brain that wants to keep your life the same. And so you can create all these great thoughts and ideas and goals and visions and all of that, but until you create the right physiology, it's not going to really create sustainable change. So we want to take those ideas and thoughts and goals and dreams and anchor them to the part of the brain designed to make them happen. You know, as I'm sitting here listening to you, uh, what's occurring to me is maybe this is the reason that a lot of self-help doesn't work. I 100% agree with that and, and that the physiological component has been largely missing. And so it's the same thing. You might have this one miracle uh, change in this one person, but by and large, the results in, in the industry are not very good. They're not. I mean, we hear the stories. You know, I've yep. read every book. That's I don't right. know why I'm still in the That's same right. position, whether it's in your, your yep. health or relationships or work or finances. That's right. So we're talking about the higher brain, but what I hear you saying is that this trickles down into all other areas of our life. Oh, you better believe it. And, and when when you turn that higher brain response on, like you saw in Jules' body during the, the demonstration, when you turn that higher brain response on, you've shifted your physiology away from survival, how do I get through the other day, how do I keep myself the same, you've shifted it into, come on world, give me all you got, I'm in growth mode, I can handle whatever you have and I can thrive in it. And at that time, if you introduce anything into your life that's productive, let's say you do a yoga class or a fitness class or even meditate, whatever it is, that's coming into a system that's in a growth mode. And so it creates sustainable change even from those other things as opposed to trying to introduce them into a system locked into just surviving. Michael, fascinating work. Higher Brain Living System, thank you so much for being here with us on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.